Ever since the finale of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, audiences have been asking Marvel to do better. And since then, we've seen a radical change in the way Marvel Studios makes their films and shows. From restructuring the TV division down to halting production on Cat 4 for extensive reshoots, and now with the teaser released, I can confidently say that we are so back. Hi, I'm your host Rob, and on this episode of Atomic Vision, I'm going to break down the teaser trailer for Captain America Brave New World, and a part of me still can't believe what I'm about to say, but after four years of Marvel teasing us, this trailer finally acknowledges that the Eternals movie did in fact happen. Well that was very moving. The trailer begins inside the Oval Office as it's revealed that Thunderbolt Ross is now the President of the United States in the MCU. With the ending of Secret Invasion, we saw President Ritson lose his mind after several scrolls tried to assassinate him. And due to the backlash from his awful hate speech, America voted him out and replaced him with Thunderbolt Ross. Since the original actor for Ross, William Hurt, passed away in 2022, Harrison Ford will not play the character, and we even get a funny nod to this recast with the same fourth wall breaking humor when Marvel recast Rhodey in Iron Man 2. I have to admit, I'm still getting used to the new look. He said, uh, lose the mustache or lose the election. Hey, buddy. You expect to see you here? Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's move on. Ross explains that even though he and Sam Wilson never saw eye to eye, which is a nod to their disagreements over the Sokovia Accords in Captain America Civil War, Ross wants to mend their squabbles by making Captain America an official member of the United States military. Ross even elaborates this statement by saying he wants to make another run at making Cap official, referencing how in the Falcon Disney Plus series, the government circumvented Steve Rogers' wishes by making US agent Captain America instead of Sam. Sam points out the flaws in Ross's proposal because the last time they tried to work together, it ended with many Avengers locked up in prison. Hank Pym always said you never can trust a Stark. Who are you? Come on, man. Thunderbolt Ross is heavily anti-superhero in the same way that Fisk hates vigilantes. So Ross retaliates back with a passive aggressive comment, hinting that he really isn't asking for Sam's help. He's ordering it. And if we disagree on how to manage this situation, then what happens? Work with me, Sam. In between this conversation, the trailer intercuts with action sequences set on some Navy vessels out in the ocean, revealing that this battle is taking place near Tiamat, the dead celestial from Eternals. That's right, Marvel is finally acknowledging the Eternals movie with a real follow-up storyline and not just a silly throwaway easter egg like from She-Hulk. So why is this battle taking place on Tiamat? Well according to some very old plot rumors, since the celestial being emerged from inside the earth, every country on the planet is trying to fight over its remains because no one knows who technically owns this new land. One very old plot rumor saw Tiamat's body being transformed into an independent island nation called Genosha. In the comics, Genosha is a mutant sovereign nation free from humanity and is a peaceful sanctuary for all mutants. Most recently, Genosha was featured in the X-Men 97 revival series. Another old rumor saw this plot detail going in a completely different direction that's equally as exciting. When Cersei killed Tiamat, she transformed his celestial matter into an earthly mineral, and it's rumored that Tiamat's body may or may not be made out of animantium, the same metal that's in Wolverine's claws. Ah, nicked it! Just got the tip with your little steak knife! If true, this would explain why these countries are fighting for this land, because whoever owns Tiamat owns this new source of metal. This would then be the perfect segue to the creation of the Weapon X program and the eventual reboot of Wolverine within the MCU proper. But this is all speculation, so who knows if any of this will be true. As President Ross gives his proposal to a large room, probably the United Nations, we see a hologram representation of the world. And on it, we see an insignia over the US, France, and India. Since the movie is called Captain America Brave New World, the plot may literally be about the government trying to create a brave new world under one government. Originally the film was called Captain America New World Order, but I think Marvel changed the title because it sounded too aggressive and didn't represent Cap's values. At this press conference, Isaiah Bradley rises from the audience, attempts to assassinate President Ross, and then manages to escape. We were first introduced to Isaiah Bradley in the Falcon Disney Plus series, and in that, we learned he was a secret Captain America that the government used, abused, and eventually exonerated. 
but here he's trying to kill the president, which seems very out of character. I can only think of two scenarios, the first being that Isaiah went crazy, which would be very lame, so I doubt that it's this idea. The second scenario is that Isaiah has been brainwashed by the villain of the film, similar to Bucky from The Winter Soldier. This makes the most sense since the story revolves around a new world order, so obviously someone must be in secret control behind the scenes. And maybe the first step in this hostile takeover is to brainwash superheroes to further the divide, similar to the plotline from Incredibles 2. In between this battle, we see a group of mysterious villains shooting guns in what I assume is Isaiah Bradley's neighborhood. And what makes this one aspect of the teaser trailer so fascinating is that Captain America Brave New World saw some pretty hefty reshoots because it added a new antagonist to the story that wasn't originally there. Giancarlo Esposito, who many of you know as Gus Fring from Breaking Bad, is now playing a mysterious antagonist in this film, but for months, no one was able to figure out which Marvel character he was going to be. Some theorized it was Bolivar Trask, others speculated it might be a variant of Norman Osborn, which is impossible because Marvel doesn't own the film rights despite his villains. But now that the trailer is out, it's been revealed that Giancarlo is playing an obscure Marvel character named George Washington Bridge. In the comics, GW used to be a mercenary, but eventually became a high-ranking S.H.I.E.L.D. agent over the years. GW has been a part of many Marvel groups like Six Pack, and of course, X-Force. Isn't that a little derivative? I don't recall asking your opinion, Peter. That wasn't me. But in this trailer, GW is way more of an antagonistic force, so there are only two ways this could really go. The first option is that this is GW's origin story, and in this film, he's still that killer mercenary, possibly a part of Six Pack, before he turns into a hero. My best guess is that President Ross secretly hires GW to hunt down Isaiah Bradley, and that's why he comes across as evil here. The second option is that Marvel is drastically changing GW to be a villain, because he is such an obscure Marvel character. Marvel has done this many times before, so I wouldn't be shocked if this happens. All I do know is that this won't be the last time we see GW, as Giancarlo has already spoiled we'll see this character in a future Disney Plus show someday. Which one? I don't know. Maybe Ironheart. Much like in Captain America Winter Soldier, this film will visit multiple spy-like locations, including a secret underground bunker where the villain of the film is probably brainwashing or experimenting on several characters. And right as things get more intense, we hear a voice saying, Global power is shifting. You're just a pawn. While this hooded figure isn't fully unveiled in this trailer, we definitely know who it is. And it's the leader. Marvel loves picking up loose ends, no matter how long the setup was. And I cannot believe we are finally seeing the leader after he was teased at the end of The Incredible Hulk 16 years ago. That movie is finally relevant. Again. Again. <laughs> There's even a secondary shot where we see the leader spying within the White House. So why is the leader in this movie? Well, besides paying off a forgotten tease from a forgotten Marvel movie, it looks like the leader has been trying to recreate the Hulk's radiated super soldier serum. And after all this time, his latest victim for experimentation is President Ross. Unlike in the comics, I don't think Thunderbolt Ross is choosing to be Red Hulk. Instead, I think he's a pawn in the leader's overall plan to destroy this new world order, and the first step is to turn the president into a big red monster. We then get rapid fire shots of action, destruction, and a funeral. And I never thought this question would ever come up, but who's gonna die in this movie? I know that it could literally be anyone, like a random S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, but that would be very underwhelming. On top of that, Marvel has done so many fake out deaths in their films, like even Nick Fury died in Winter Soldier. So truthfully, I can only think of three suspects. The first suspect could be Isaiah Bradley, which would be pretty depressing after the character finally got the recognition he deserved at the end of the Falcon Disney Plus show. So I personally hope that's not him. The second suspect is that it's Thunderbolt Ross, who might die after he's experimented on and turned into the Red Hulk. Maybe there's no way to cure him, and the only way to take him out is to take him out. But the third suspect would be the most depressing choice of them all, and this funeral might be for Steve Rogers. The last time we saw Old Cap was at the end of Endgame, and since then, timeline-wise, it's been years already, so maybe Steve finally passed on. The trailer then ends with a climactic showdown where the White House explodes, probably because of Red Hulk, 
and the closing scene sees Thunderbolt Ross exclaiming to Sam, You may be Captain America, but you're not Steve Rogers. Only for Sam to reply with, You're right. I'm not. Captain America Brave New World has a lot to live up to since the original Steve Rogers trilogy is one of the best Marvel trilogies in MCU history. But the one thing I'm walking away with from this teaser is that it makes it very clear that Sam isn't a Steve doppelganger. Sam Wilson shares the same qualities as Steve, which is why he's Captain America now. But that does not make them the same person. And I love that Marvel is fully leaning into that. Change is something comic book fans are extremely opposed to, but change is necessary to push stories forward, and I have faith that Sam Wilson as Captain America will live up to the hype. Oh, and Joaquin Torres is the new Falcon now, which is so damn cool. But what did you think about the teaser? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Atomic Vision, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. You want Wesley Snipes or Denzel? Done. Roll sound. Cut the check. 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 I kind of want to see the Wesley Snipes. <laughs> all right, you want you want Ben Affleck or Keanu Reeves? Why don't you stick a in it? Of course. In <laughs> That's one way to do it.